The zombie virus is extremely infectious and presents as a sort of encephalitis with flu-like symptoms attacking the nervous system. The virus is spread primarily through blood and saliva, but there have been rare cases of infection through scratches. Properly treated, a scratch victim often makes a full recovery, but pre-existing health conditions can change the likelihood of that dramatically. The virus eventually shuts down all higher functions as the brain swells and the victim will become extremely irritable in the early stages of infection. Their pupils will dilate, making bright lights extremely painful. Their irritability progresses to aggressive mood swings, then into violent blackout rages until eventually only a lizard brain hunger remains as the patient appears to expire. This death is deceiving. As the body continues to function without any of the metabolic processes generally considered life, despite its ravenous hunger. The corpse is able to move and still receive sensory input, but will no longer require food or drink. It will not tire and feels no pain. The virus works a strange biochemical change on the flesh of the carrier infusing its cells with a substance that seems to somehow retard the natural process of decomposition. Normally an exposed corpse can rot away to bone in a matter of weeks, but one of the infected dead can still be shambling along almost a year later. When newly turned, a zombie is terrifyingly fast and strong, its body operating at full predatory capacity at all times. They're still dead though and their tissues don't heal from strain or injury, so it isn't long before they're reduced to the shambling dead you mostly see now. Most zombies end up eating their own lips, and repeated hand injuries due to poor coordination can leave their fingers jagged bone talons. Their ravenous hunger will often cause them to overstuff their guts to the point of rupture, and it isn't unusual to see them trailing their intestines in the dirt. The dead are very fast and strong, but they lack fine coordination. They can climb stairs, but not ladders, that sort of thing. I've slept in trees and on the top of buildings to stay out of their reach. Their pupils are wide open at all times and they have excellent night vision. I try to avoid traveling at night as they see far better than I do and a flashlight will only attract them. Some animals can also catch the virus, especially canines, but they react much differently than an infected human host. The infected animal will present rabies-like symptoms and are fully capable of transmitting the virus through their bites. Death will occur from extended seizures and generalized organ failure anywhere from 12 hours to a couple months later. And on death, they will rapidly decompose the exact opposite of the slow decomposition in human zombies. The accelerated cellular breakdown leaves even the skeleton reduced to a greasy paste. Occasionally, a small group of infected animals will form a pack, becoming a dangerous new threat in the area until they eventually die off. Zombies are attracted to lights, loud noises, and unusual smells. For this reason, fires or operating vehicles or tools are dangerous. I tend to travel on foot, but a bicycle with a well-oiled chain is an invaluable asset. The classic movie trope of being able to kill a zombie by destroying its brain is, thankfully, accurate. Bodily injuries are completely ineffective, fire does nothing but set everything aflame, and chemical agents are similarly useless. Anything that injures a sufficient portion of the brain will take down a zombie. My usual method is a good crack to the head with my hammer, but I've also jammed something into an eye socket and given what's left in the skull a quick stir. <laughs> 